Okay, sorry, I couldn't take the last uh, lecture on uh, this. I couldn't organize that uh, session on Tuesday. Uh, so that is why I think the attendance today is also quite low. But anyway, I'll go through some questions uh, in the beginning, as I generally go through, and uh, after that, I would be. You can ask me some questions about uh, this week's. I mean the. I don't know when the last week was, but about the lecture on boosting and bagging boosting and uh, some basics of learning theory. Okay, so the questions are mostly about uh, I think bagging and boosting. Uh, I think I have one question on uh, on uh, VC dimension. So okay, so the question, the first question is in Ada boost we give. I'm sorry. Right. So the first question is: In Ada Boost, we give more weights to points having been misclassified. Please give me a minute. My pen is not working for some reason. Okay, uh, so the first question is in uh, in Ada boost we give more weights to points having uh, more weights to points having been misclassified in previous iterations. Now, if we introduced a limit or cap of the weight that any point can take, for example, say we introduce a restriction that uh, prevents any point's weight from exceeding a value of ten. That's uh, just an example. Which among the following would be an effect on such a modification? So, uh, so if you remember Ada boost, what happens is we first give all of. Uh, suppose we have. Um, uh, suppose we have eight samples. So all of the samples will be given a weight of one by eight in the beginning. Then uh, after running the after running the algorithm for one iteration, you will calculate the error, and based on that error, you will either up weight a particular sample or down weight a particular sample. Specifically. If uh, the sample is correctly classified, you will down weight that sample, and if it is incorrectly classified, you will up try up weighting that sample. Sample. So that is the way Ada boost works. But when you up weight, uh, when you uh, that prevents any points weight from exceeding a value of ten. So let's say you are trying to up weight a sample, and but whenever the sample exceeds the value of ten. You fix it to ten. So even if it is twelve, you will fix it to ten. If it even if it is hundred, you will fix it to ten. Uh, in such a case, what would happen? The first option is we may observe the performance of the classifier reduce as the number of stages increase. So uh, that is the first uh, first option. The second option is it makes the final classifier robust to outliers. It may result in lower overall overall performance. Which one is? Uh, I mean, will the overall performance reduce if you do this? Uh, can I mean uh, it can be yes or no? I mean, so um, I think no, sir. Why? Uh, because still, even if the weight is less, but still. I uh, I could not. I am not uh, being able to hear you. Okay. How about once? How about it now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Now it's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, I think there is a problem from in your connection. Okay. Let me try to uh, log in back. Sure, sure, sure. I'll wait.
हेलो या आई कैन हियर यू नो बेटर या मच बेटर या सो द आई वाज थिंकिंग अबाउट इट बी नॉट रिजल्ट इन रिड्यूसिंग द ओवरऑल परफॉर्मेंस बिकॉज दो द वेटेज इज लो बट इट इट डजंट मीन दैट इट इज कंप्लीटली रिड्यूसिंग इट इज जस्ट इंस्टेड ऑफ माइट बी 90% supporting it might be 80% but still the majority will be still supporting the 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 real outcome uh the majority means you are talking about the final outcome right final outcome the yeah, final the, yeah right. so it might be like instead of 90 might be if they have reduced to 60 or 70 but still the that final outcome will be still supported by the with major weight Um, relatively major weight i think <laughs> uh, actually uh, yeah so uh, so the way you are thinking i can't really fault that but see the the way this will work is i'll i'll give you i i mean of course i can't construct a example for this but what i can tell you is suppose at one particular point of time and one particular iteration your sample weight could have been 100 let's say suppose i'm i'm just giving you an example your sample weight could have been 100 and uh, there are uh, let's say uh, so suppose uh, you have some weights in the range of uh, 10 to 15 and you have so suppose you have uh, 100 examples in this range which have these weights and you also have uh from 100 to 115 this range of weights you have another 100 examples okay now if these i mean if you had not done this cap then what would have happened is you would you would have got a classifier which would focus heavily on this 1000 examples because of the way ada boost works it would obviously upweight these examples much more than it upweights these examples and it would and it would uh, then uh, upweight once they start upweighting then your classifiers in the next stage of boosting would be focused on these 100 to 100 i mean these particular examples which got 100 to 115 weights but now since you have capped your uh, all your examples to 10 weight all of them will now get a weight of 10 and therefore there will be no incentive for your classifier to pick this 100 examples over this 100 examples all of them will now become equal in the eyes of your ada boost classifier and therefore for all your classifiers after this i mean even in one stage if all of them become equal to the classifier then in the next stage also they will remain they will continue to remain equal uh, are you getting my point yes yes sir yeah so that is why what will happen is the th- the thing that you said that overall the after after the overall classification there will be some weightage where Peep, uh, where the classifier will be able to do it correctly the thing is at every point of time you would you would put this cap of 10 therefore there can be no way once your classifier sees a difference between this 100 examples and this 100 examples if you always put a cap of this 10 that means these 100 examples are never seen although they are very much different but they are never seen differently by your classifier and therefore none of your classifiers will be able, able to classify between these two groups and therefore it will result in a lower overall performance okay so this is definitely so th- you can think of this as sort of a regularization so regularization will also reduce your performance on the training error right so here also it will tr- it will start reducing your performance and uh, since i talked about regularization the other effect that regularization does is it makes the final classifier robust to outliers so this is one example the other example may be you have 100 exam or uh, 1000 examples right which have the weight in the range of 10 to 15 and you have let's say 10 examples 10 examples which have their weights in the range of 100 to 115 so if you have this so now you can you can see right that it will always so if you are not put a cap of this 10 then what would have happened is they would have uh, your classifier would have looked at this 10 examples and it would have become very strong for doing this classification of 10 examples okay so it makes the so but if you put a cap of 
then this 10 examples and this 1000 examples are looking at the are, are becoming almost the uh, I mean they are treating your model will treat both of them similarly and therefore it will not look at the outliers at all ok. So, that is the other uh, impact that it will make it makes the final classifier robust to outliers ok. I hope uh, that is clear to all of you now. Okay, so the next question is again on bagging boosting. So, which among the uh, which among the following are some of the differences between? Sir, um, yeah. About the point A, sir, even that might be for the previous question. Yeah, so we may observe we the may performance observe. as the number of stages increase is not a correct logic. Why will the number of stages increase? So, if the number of stages increase, it means lot and lot of the lower weight ones will still reach that maximum threshold of ten, right, sir? So, in that case uh, the type of no I mean uh, I mean uh, the reason for the number of stages to increase right. So, uh, so uh, I mean the first point is saying that we may observe the performance of the classify reduce as the number of stages increase. So, with the increase in the number of stages why will your classifier perform poorly. So, so it is like stage 1 you had a particular error stage 2 you had another error stage 3 you had another error. So, uh, with the uh, with with as the number of stages progress why will your classifier error outputs I mean why will uh, so for example, you had at one stage let us say your classifier was uh, 70 percent accurate right at one stage your classifier was 70 percent accurate and uh, that is fine. Uh, now, after the so you you looked at your all these numbers you updated you did something with all your weights and then you did a boosting round one and uh, then can your classifier come then your cla can your classifier um, weights can it come down that is the question I mean can it be 60 percent accurate now. because might be what uh, I understand is yeah because in case if we do not um, like whatever the error ones because hmm. whichever the ones were predicted error hmm. so their weight should be increased. Now, if we put a uh, like a upper band on this error weights then hmm. it might be uh, equal weight which will be given for other ones. So, hmm. the probability of get those error ones getting classified correctly will reduce. As no, so if you are if you are probably I mean if in the first stage of your classification your uh, I mean suppose you have some outliers ok let us talk about outliers only then something of this sort might happen. So, suppose you have some outliers so suppose you have 10 you have uh, 10 examples which are your outliers ok let us consider this situation. So, if you have 10 examples which are your outliers and in the first stage itself your classification was perfect on these 10 examples right. Your classification was perfect on these 10 examples then of course, your classifier is doing very well on the outliers. Then the outliers weight will reduce with time I mean in the next round in the next round of classification or the next round of boosting your this the weights of these will be down weighted right. Now, when your weights of uh, when the when the weights of particular of, of your particular outliers are down weighted that means, you are not looking why are they called outliers in the first place because they are much smaller in number than the other group. So, now the high I mean so are you getting my point here till now is it clear? Mm, it is not not well, fully clear sir might be once if you can explain how that add a boost thing works because I am not able to visualize that outlier part. Right, ok. So, see what will happen is. So, what will happen is so suppose you have uh, 90. Um, so, outliers means uh, so outliers means ok. Let us talk about decision trees ok. So, uh, so in outliers I mean decision tree will have many many features ok like they will have uh, let us say uh, decision tree you have 1000 features in your problem and very simply you are doing a classification problem. So, you have 1000 features and based on those 1000 features you are supposed to do some uh, uh, you are do supposed to do some classification into 2 classes. 
Now these thousand features what will happen is, uh, so these thousand features since uh, the, I mean the way decision uh, the way adder boost will work is they will ask you to create a very simple classifier. Okay. They will ask you to create a very simple classifier and uh, so that at least the accuracy of the classifier is more than 50 percent. Now you have uh, uh, I mean the number of training examples you have 1000 out of which 900 are I mean 10 are outliers, 10 are outliers means they are uh, so how can I say, so let us say uh, okay, let us say for I mean I am simplifying this very very much it, it is generally never like this but okay let me do it like this. So for class 0 let us say for uh, 900 examples uh, okay 500 500 right okay so so for class 0 for 500 examples in class 0 you have 995 features uh, uh, no not 995 features uh, you have let us say you have okay you have 5 features always same okay 5 features are always same uh, I mean you can imagine some some problem setting where 5 features always have the same values whenever those 5 features have the same values you have a class 0 let us say for uh, for okay for class 0 right so you have out of 500 examples you have uh, 450 such or 490 such cases out of 500 you have 490 examples where 5 features are at the same value you have 10 examples where these 5 features have different values. So with respect to class 0 most likely this 10 examples would be as with you can consider them as outliers because they are very different from the 490 other examples right. Now suppose I mean is the problem setting clear till now? Yeah, so suppose now, uh, suppose uh, your Adaboost classifier or the classifier that you train in the first go does very well on this 490 examples, that is the first possibility that it has, it does very well on this 490 examples and does poorly on this 10 examples. So poorly means it classifies them at class 1 and these 490 examples it classifies it as class, um, uh, it classifies it as class uh, 0, this is class 1, this is class 0, right. So what will happen then since your I mean these 10 examples this 10 examples they are misclassified what it will do is it will try to operate them correct because that is Adaboost that is what Adaboost is telling you you have to operate them and downweight this these. So 490 will now be downweighted and 10 will be upweighted correct is it fine yes sir yeah so now when this 490 is downweighted what will happen is um, yeah so now when this 4 490 is upweighted uh, this 10 is upweighted you will receive another classifier which will now look at this 10 examples and try to classify them correctly right so now now let's say i have boosting stage 2 so in the boosting stage 2 what i will do is i will say okay this 10 examples i have to classify correctly and this 490 examples I have to uh, I have to classify uh, I have to classify incorrectly. Now however now you consider the situation what is happening now you consider the situation like this 10 this 10 examples which were supposed to have a very high weight are now given a cap of 10. So if for example if you had not given this cap of 10 then your next stage classifier would look at this 10 examples it will classify them very very well but these 490 examples it will start to misclassify and then your accuracy will start coming down but now because of the way that you have designed your algorithm you have you have you, you have not allowed these weights to go much higher than i mean 10 is an example 10 is just an example i'm saying that you are uh, I mean the, the weights for these 10 examples or these outliers will not be much different from this 490 examples because you have put a cap on that maximum weight that you have and therefore 
these 10 examples is not looked at that much differently from this 490 examples. Is it clear now? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Yeah. So, that is why what will happen is as the number of stages increase because this 10 examples and this 490 examples is not looked at differently by your model, it will still start to, I mean maybe what it will try to do is it will start to classify, I mean these 10 examples are not all similar. So, some of them may not be that much, that much of an outlier, some of them may be very much an outlier. So, maybe it will try to classify the examples which are quite close to this 490 examples first, it will try to classify it correctly. Okay. So, that is the reason why with as the number of stages increase, generally it will never happen that this, uh, it, sh it should never happen that uh, your classification accuracy is coming down. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Right. So, the next question is which among the following are some of the differences between bagging and boosting. So, the first first point is in bagging we use the same classification algorithm for training on each sample of the data whereas, in boosting we use different classification of course, this is not correct boosting also we use the same classification algorithm for all stage for all the training data samples. Bagging is easy to parallelize where boosting is inherently a sequential process is this correct? Yes sir. Right. And in bagging we typically use sampling with replacement whereas, in boosting we typically use weighted sampling techniques. Is this correct or not? Correct. Right. And in comparison with the performance of a base classifier on a particular data set, bagging will generally not increase the error whereas, boosting may lead to an increase in error. Is this correct or wrong? Right. So, this is actually correct. Okay. Why this is correct? Because you see nothing has been to told to you about the performance of the base classifier on the particular data set. So, if your performance, so there are two things about boosting. So, the first thing is if boosting, I mean if your base, base classifier, if it has an accuracy of a little above 50 percent. So, a little above 50 percent means, okay, let me write it like this, little above 50 percent. Then, if you do boosting in multiple stages, you can get arbitrarily strong classifiers, okay, that is one. The other point is, if it is slightly less than 50 percent, then using boosting, you can get arbitrarily worse classifiers, okay. It will be like, uh, I mean, uh, you will vary, it, it, it will, it will lead to an increase in error because you can understand the way boosting works. If your classifier itself is less than 50 percent accurate, that means that more than half of the points that you were supposed to pay more attention to, you are actually paying attention to the other half. So, of course, your classifier performance will reduce in that case. So, that is why you will always see that in boosting, they always say that base classifier should have, should have an accuracy of at least 50, more than slightly more than 50 percent. Okay. Yeah. Sir, can, I, can I ask some clarification on this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, basically, not on the question. Yeah. Uh, in general, mm -hmm. uh, what is the meaning of the sampling with the replacement? One question. What are the word here? What are the specific? What is the significant of the replacement word here? Right, right. That's okay. one question. Yeah. And uh, one more question. Uh, at least, you know, in the boosting case, mm -hmm. when the classes were there, it was clearly explained how boosting algorithm worked. Mm -hmm. so, misclassified values, uh, data set are given the more weightage. Right. There's a clarity is there, okay. Right. In the bagging, it's, huh. like, uh, it's not very clear for us when you have the smaller data set and how you are merging, maybe some probability, whatever. The question hmm. is, hmm. No? Hmm. But hmm. not very clearly, uh, I didn't got because the, it's explained like that. No, we make the sampling with the replacement and we will merge, somehow we, we will merge it finally, okay. The right. The merging part is not very clear. Like, what is the clarity is the ADA boost or the other boosting technique? Right. So, bagging is actually a very simple technique. Okay. So, that is why I do not think there are ma many mathematical ways of explaining bagging also. So, what you will do is you will have m training examples. Okay. So, what you will, uh, okay. So, let us say, okay, let me put some numbers that might be easier. 
So, suppose you have 1000 training examples. Yeah, you have 1000 training examples and you select, I mean you decide on a number, let us say you decide on the number 800, you select 800 examples and you train, train a model on that. Now, how you decide these 800 examples? You pick randomly between 1 to 1000, you pick random numbers between 1 to 1000 and I mean random integers from 1 to 1000 and those random integers, those you take and you put it into your bag and train a classifier on that ok. That is a classifier 1 let us say. This 800 number is fixed. Then what you do is you again take from 1 to 1000, again you take another 800 points. These are different from these, these are not same and you train another classifier on that. Similarly, you do it for how many rounds you wish, you always take 800 samples from the those 1000 data points and you train your classifiers. Then you do a majority voting. You, took, you take average, whatever you want to do, you can do, but uh, that is that is the next part. But now here comes, uh, now this is why it is called sampling with replacement, why? Because you in the second stage of, in the second stage of sampling these points, when you are sampling these 800 points, it is quite possible that you are sampling the exact same 800, I mean not the exact same, but some 800 points of course, that you have selected from in the second stage are also common in the first stage, because you cannot have two completely different sets of 800 points from 1000 points in two separate, in two rounds. So, it is like, so sampling, one way of sampling is you have 1000 points, you take a sample, you take some sample of let us say 10 points, you tr do something with it and you remove those 10 points completely. So, when you sample it the next time, you have 990 points. Again you sample 10 points, you remove this 10 points. Third time you have 980 points. So, that is called sampling without replacement. This is sampling with replacement because the first 10 points that you take, you again put them back. You are replacing those, that is why it is called sampling with replacement. So, you replace those, again you take another 10 points. You do not know whether you are getting the same 10 points or not, but you take another 10 points and so on. Okay, is the sampling with replacement bit clear? Okay, it is only a, a term used, I do not I don't know whether it is mathematically the word is correct or wrong, but it looks like so for me, hmm. uh, uh, because I, uh, okay, I, I do not much on the other places, I got a little confused here. See, when you are telling with replacement, hmm. only indication that when I am training the next time the model, yeah. I will put the data from the same, same uh, data set of the old data set, hmm. but I may get the same data or different data. Yes. No yes. guarantee that it is a new, new data set. Huh. So, the guarantee for that would be, so generally there is a, I mean there is a way to select such samples. So, for example, if you see, I will talk about uh, some coding here. So, if you talk of Python. Okay, if you talk of Python coding, then what will happen is you will take some uh, some uh, random dot uh, some some random function is there, numpy function is there, but somehow you get these hundred uh, eight hundred samples. Okay, so you train a classifier based on that. All for all random variables for all these selections, you will have something known as a seed. Okay. So, b based on this seed, you can actually ensure that all of the things that you are getting are actually different from each other, ok. So, it is highly unlikely that you will get the exact same 800, classi 800 points for classification, uh, because you are selecting, I mean uh, you are selecting 800 points from, uh, 800 points from 1000 points, you will never get the same 800 points, let me say it like that because you will always uh, sample randomly using this seed function. So, this whatever value of seed you will give a different set of 800 values will come to you. No, okay. I, I understood this context. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, this replacement. Sir, uh, sir, uh, just uh, on the add to the point. Yeah. I understood, understand completely that uh, the sampling with replacement. So, it is a random picking time. But yeah. Can you in bagging, you will never use sampling with without no, replacement. No, but in wherever, not connected with that. But 
Padmi, sampling means it looks like sampling with replacement only looks ideal. But I want to know, curious, where we use, in which context we use sampling uh, without replacement? I think in bagging only they used it. It's like Ulta, I think when we, we start class now, I think in the bagging only this is coming, I think. Boosting it's not coming, uh, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, so he is asking about some other applications where sampling without replacement no, no, is no, used. No, the question is very clear. Huh. Where the, what, you, what is the concept of uh, where this one, no, sampling without replacement? That concept is confusing them. What yeah, so sampling right? without replacement would be like you would take 10 samples, then and the next stage your number of data points will become 990. Then you will, so yeah, so uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So sir, let I me. Sir, sir, I understood. I understood now. Now I'll tell you, sir. I yeah. So I let me let me complete my point. So sir, for example, sir, yeah, yeah. Sir, just. Yeah, I understood the replacement meaning. Sir, I understood now. Yeah. Now I'll explain now, sir. No, no. Yeah. Then let me give an example where sampling with replacement without replacement is done. So. No, I think now I am asking. I know this is in probability will come. If if you are putting the data again back to like for example when I do take the ball in the like we have the boxes green ball red ball and all things. So, we can try without replacement with replacement. So, yes. here are the same thing. I am putting the data back. What are the data I take? Like, eight data I take and now. This yes. data I give back to the back to start to 1000 set. Hmm. Again, I take the fresh 800. That's called replacement. Right, right. Suppose if I don't take this 800 given back to ordinary data set, then hmm. it's called without replacement. Without replacement. Precisely. Yeah, this is the basic concept of probability. That's why I heard this word. I'm not getting the correlate. No, no, I, 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 sir, I, I know the definition of. Uh, yeah, so I'll give you an example about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I want to know is where actually this is relevant. Right. Right. So let's say you are training a neural network, okay? So I am I am digressing here a lot, but bear with me. So let's say I am training a neural network. Uh, can you ex explain to me what is the mini batch training procedure of a neural network? So let us say my mini batch is 32, okay. So can you explain to me what is the mini batch training procedure? Uh, yeah, 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 one step by step you can explain. So suppose you have, uh, I will give you a very good thing of 196 training examples or 96 training examples, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, data set, I will make first 32 data. Right. Then I will train it uh, for the iteration. Right. Then I will take uh, one more next to the two. Huh. So then here, okay, okay, stop. Yeah. So is this sampling with replacement or without replacement? Without replacement. That's what I is not going. I am not uh, putting back this data to yeah. this. So, data. so is this clear now? Yes. Yes, sir, it is clear. Yeah. What happens if we do the same thing with replacement? Then what, what is your, uh, I mean, so, for example, you are training examples, you are, you are training a neural network, you are training a neural network which will, uh, I mean, when will you stop finally? So, in, in your mini batch training procedure, okay, so in your mini batch training procedure, you have used a batch size of 32 and you are supposed to go up to 96 training examples. So, for every epoch, you want to see this 96 training examples. If you had done sampling with replacement there, First of all, you would have never, you would have never uh, ensured that you had looked at all the 96 training examples. Okay, and, okay, I got it and second is, and second is how you stop. When will you stop? What? When we exhaust all the training examples. Uh -huh. So, but you are never sure that you have exhausted all the training examples. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. in instances where we want to ensure that we cover all examples, huh. for. Uh, See, so, so I just gave you this example, but never, I mean, I, I, I at least have never seen sampling with replacement being talked in the mini batch training procedure, but it is an example of sampling with repla without replacement, true, but uh, I mean, sampling and all these things are very, are very relevant to all this bagging, bagging sort of thing. And even in boosting, boosting is a weighted sampling that is different, but at least in bagging, sampling is very relevant. And uh, for neural networks, you should think of mini batch training procedure the way it is. Do not think of it as replacement, uh, as sampling with, without whatever replacement. Do not think of it as sampling at all, okay. Because whenever you are, you think of sampling, you think of, okay, I have a large group of data from within which I will take a small sample. But mini batch training is generally never like that. Mini batch training is always you have to look at the entire data set. 
okay okay sir got yeah ha ha so combining is easy right so combining is you will get some uh, what you will get some hundreds as classifiers let's say you have got c1 to c100 and if you have a, uh, if you have a classification problem then what you would do is you will take a majority vote among these hundred classifiers so you will uh, if you have okay let's say majority vote might be difficult here because you have even number of so let's say you have 101 classifiers and whichever is whichever class is predicted maximum among all these c1 to c101 you predict your model to have that that particular uh, yes. class and, and in general we don't give any weightage for it no weightage no way in general you will not give weightage some people do give weightage but bagging is very simple in that way so yeah so the main advantage is the bagging it is very simple the other advantage of bagging is uh, one of the questions that i had put there was the parallelization so because it you are doing sampling by replacement so you can as well as start all these 101 classifiers at one go you take 100 800 uh, you can you take 101 different samples from 100 to 1 to 1000 and you start training your 101 classifiers parallelly got it so that is why sampling with replacement is also helping you if you had done sampling without replacement then you would have to look at this okay what are the 800 samples selected i will not select those 800 samples in the next stage but here you can select all of them together okay so, sir uh, yeah. in the boosting um, like where we can tell the weights weights <coughs> are those hyper parameters right sir weights are with respect to the probability of being picked from the sample which the, one in, in the boosting in boosting yes yes of so, course so it is just uh, the probability of being picked from sample is weight not like those uh, w0 w1 no 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 in boosting what we are doing actually with our classified data set we are ensuring that next random select it will come so that it will be ensured that's the reason no sir so boosting what you do is so uh, boosting you will start with so uh, okay yes uh, yes yeah yeah, yeah. Not, not in the last one itself all the classifiers will be same algorithm and so no in the bagging in bagging as well as in boosting all classifiers will have the same algorithm Algorithm is same. Algorithm is always same. Mostly they are used as de uh, decision trees. So, and the name for that is if you have multiple decision trees, then you call them random forests. Forest, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Sir, uh, yeah. Sir, one thing is uh, bagging. Why only for decision trees? Uh, we can. Ah, you, uh -huh, you can use others also. also. You can. For validation, we are using for validation also. Uh, yeah, you can use others also. I mean, uh, generally they are used in decision trees, but. bagging you can use uh, i mean bagging also you can uh, use whatever you can use neural networks also whatever you want you can use i don't know sir that question we can we take in that question is interesting hmm. the basically decision tree we prefer the uh, i don't know the features no uh, hmm. i don't know how to reduce the height of the decision tree right so, yes uh, so is a parallel many decision tree i'll do it then i take is it that, that direction it's going it, uh, this i did not get your question See, I have the huge data set actually. Okay. Yeah. So one method is as you told, if I do the new smaller data set in parallel, parallel. So basically, it's a computational improvement. Hmm. One yes. Way yes. Into, yes. And another way looking at in general, the decision tree. If you have the, uh, I, I just said I don't know here. The decision tree usually if you have more features are there. Hmm. We don't keep the decision tree because depth will increase it. Right. Yes. So is there any link with this? That no, I don't think. You got no my question. uh so i did not get your question entirely but yeah so uh, decision trees i am talking about see by uh, bagging and boosting they are learning techniques okay they are not it's not like you will always need to have a decision tree for example to bagging you can have other classifiers also and you can bag them okay that is the first point it's not i mean you as i said you can even take neural networks and start bagging with them nobody stops you from doing that bagging is like simple right you will have 800 samples you will take pick 100 800 samples and learn 100 neural networks on all, all of them on these 800 samples okay and then your 100 neural networks will give you 100 such classifiers and then you give those 100 classifiers and and uh, to the person to the person who had given you to train and say that okay take a majority vote of this and uh, your neural network will be and you are good to go 
so that is that is how new that is how bagging works so i am saying that for the decision trees perspective i mean here be, because bagging is not related to any particular algorithm in general bagging is also not related to the depth of the decision tree in general yeah so sir the another way which classifier work best for the smaller data set which classifier will uh, work well for the smaller data set that is very difficult to answer ah okay then leave it so uh, that's why i am thinking that question uh, suppose here what i am doing i am ready to make data set for each algorithm correct no right so preferably preferably i should use the classifier uh, which is works well with the smaller data set so in uh, i am doing it smaller data set correct no so for so smaller data sets what you will need to do is see so uh, here Uh, so one thing is you can even train neural networks okay it's not like neural network can't work on small data sets you have to you can use neural networks you have to use regularization correct now if you use decision trees it's not like that decision trees perf always perform extremely well on small data sets decision trees will perform extremely well on small data sets if you read if you constrain the height of the decision trees So, if you constrain the height of decision trees, that is equivalent to regularization in neural networks. So, for all learning algorithms, they will all work well on small data sets if you regularize them properly. So, that's the idea. Regularization is again a very general thing. It comes up as in different ways in different algorithms. Regularization for logistic regression or linear regression would be that. Um, uh, so. see there are two things right one is regularization so regularization for neural networks logistic regression all these would be that uh, lambda norm of w square okay the ridge regression or uh, all these were taught when linear regression logistic regression neural networks were there and neural networks has a specific thing called dropout okay regularization for decision trees that becomes your depth constraint you don't want your depth to increase that much at the end of the day these are the same things except that depending on the structure of the algorithm of the learning algorithm you are changing your definition neural networks has a lot of weights so you are saying that okay my weights cannot increase in values that much decision trees has a lot of depth so you are saying okay my decision tree cannot increase in depth that much at the end of the day both are regularizing your neural net uh, both are regularizing your machine learning models that's the basic idea and if your model is well regularized then all of these should perform equally well or if you regularize them poorly then unequally well on or un equally equally poorly on on your small data sets okay is my was the point clear Okay, so where was I? Right. Okay. So the next question is more of a definition. So suppose the VC dimension of a hypothesis space is six. Which of the following are true? At least one set of six points can be shattered by the hypothesis space. Two sets of six points can be shattered by the hypothesis space. All sets of six points can be shattered by the hypothesis space. No set of seven points can be shattered by the hypothesis space. Uh, which one or which are correct? So is C correct? A and D, sir. Right. Yes. A and D are correct. Okay. 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 So the next one would be ensembles would lead yield bad results when there is a significant diversity among the models. Is this true or false? Fourth second question regarding VC. Hello. Yeah, Leonard. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, how? What about the VC of sine? Suppose some function sine omega t or some trigonometric function. Sine of a hypothesis space. Hmm. Suppose some data is distributed like this, sinusoidal. So what will be the hypothesis uh, VC dimension in this case? Why are you asking this? 
because of the concept of which i mentioned is not clear to me so nobody will ask you about sin omega t sin t and all those no, so we are defined this vc dimension so vc dimension uh, yeah so the way the vc dimension total nature is very common in signal process electrical engineering use a lot so we can't say that this cannot happen data sinusoidal is everywhere see so vc dimension the way you are approaching vc dimension is incorrect okay so vc dimensions would be like you have a hypothesis space right so you have this so first of all you need to have a hypothesis space like this okay so i don't know whether you would like a hypothesis space to be like this and then if you say that okay what are the uh, what are the number of points that can be shattered by these of course i mean i mean plus minus you can say sometimes yeah so what will be your plus and minus here can you tell positive like positive half is a plus and negative so so this is your plus this is your minus yes this is your plus this is your minus okay so everything can we define this is for periodic function or something yeah so everything above uh, positive is plus and everything about negative is ab below the negative one is minus and uh, now you want to define the vc dimension of this uh, okay other way of some certain interval are uh, see i mean this can i mean this will have a vc dimension of infinity okay all points can be all points can be there will be only lower bound that right? upper bound could be any no not for uh, that case i mean for example if you have a rectangle rectangle we say that if you have a rectangle and suppose you have five points five points randomly you have five points okay right so and uh, your hypothesis space is always a rectangle right so your rectangle uh, i mean okay me so in vc my value compute vc to uh, order we, we are not uh, allowed to change right our number of our sample data what is given can we change another transformation and then no 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 so vc dimension is not a signal processing thing okay so as a first uh, concept so this is uh, i mean these are the five points that you were given okay sir, sir, can i yeah then once again that shattering and vc so that it will more clear for us yeah the application is not clear and what yeah. so what will happen if it attempt this question more clear for us yeah yeah can i was very not very clear convinced with the way it happened <laughs> That which one like just dividing to which one which right? question were you talking about no VC not whole concept of vc dimension yeah see vc dimension before that you should know what is shattering correctly right so okay. see the first thing is the first point is of course vc dimension has to be uh, so there are two things two ways to look at it so vc dimension is you will have um, okay <coughs> right okay so what you can say is so let's say i have a set of four points somehow magically you got a set of not four points you have got a magically you have got some set of n points right which you first so i will draw about i will talk about 2d only so which you draw in the 2d plane right and then your hypothesis is so your first of all you have to fix your hypothesis so hypothesis can be okay it may be a circle uh, so hypothesis can be it may be a rectangle okay so these are some strange hypothesis okay but uh, but let's say you somebody has told you that i mean they will always say uh, what happens when you have a circle if you have a A rectangle if you have a triangle and so on right so let's say when you draw in the 2d plane you have a set of points you draw the set of points this points is random to you okay nobody is giving you these points now once you get these points you see whether your 
hypothesis or this shape which they have asked you to find the VC dimension for, you see whether for all different classifications or for all different class assignments of these four points, is this rectangle enough for classification. Okay? Even if you find one such set of points for which this rectangle is classifying is able to classify all possible configurations that means you are uh, you are done your VC dimension is at least that much. For example, if you have a rectangle so let us say somebody comes and tells you ok. Is it only valid for two class plus minus? Or uh, mostly mostly yeah. So, oh, ok. So, if, if you are given these four points and suppose somebody says that ok this is positive class and these are negative classes. Now, you draw a rectangle no way you will be able to draw a rectangle to, to separate out the two classes. Okay? But this does not mean that the VC dimension of, uh, of the rectangle is less than 4 because this is just one class of points. Suppose if you have um, so, in this question why you taken the rectangle with the points, we can we have a one rectangle which only contains plus and rest or minus, we can clearly better. Which one? In the example you just wrote, right. uh, the rectangle, yeah. you draw the minus point on vertices or on line you have drawn, huh. plus is inside. Right. So, can we make a smaller rectangle which only inside contain huh. the plus and outside is the minus. So, it, it, it can set up. Yeah, 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 that is fine. So, so what you are saying you is, no, what you are saying is, see, this is this is one class. Okay. So, you are saying that, okay, I will draw a rectangle like this. Yes. That is fine. But what will you do if I assign this minus, this minus? Uh, uh, I mean of course, I mean this is very difficult to get, okay, this minus and this plus, oh this is again the same the thing, same it's the same case, okay, let me. So, what is the initial condition like we do not have to assume that any data point can take any plus minus. Like ha, ha, ha. So, once you fix a set of points, once you fix a set of points, all possible combinations have to be, there, have to be uh, correctly judged. So, why collinear we handle especially it is a part of 2D no? also? Haan, so, you can handle, yeah, yeah, collinear is a good example. So, let us say you have uh, one such example where this is plus, this is minus, this is plus, this is minus. Okay? Right? This is fine? Okay. With a rectangle, you won't be able to separate these four points. So here, actually, the sine wave come into my picture. My no, no. Picture. Don't talk about sine waves. No, sine. Here we separate by this. That's sine waves. I will talk about separately. No, it's not like if a rectangle is not able to separate plus and minus, your VC dimension is not four. That is not the concept. The concept is even if you find one set of four points where the rectangle is able to separate them correctly. That means your VC dimension is at least we can, greater. We can settle with any geometry or just a line. That is not clear. Actually, no, we that will be given to you. Okay. That will be given to you. That is the that is the part of the problem set it to give to you. It's not like yes, because somewhere we see the circular is taken VC dimension. Uh, VC dimension is the property of the hypothesis space. It's not property of the points. Okay. okay? So VC dimension. Uh, yeah. So. That, uh, that's it, that question clarification. Yeah. See, here we have two things. One is actually the hyperspace. That's your rectangle here. Hmm. And we are drawing in the two-dimensional space. Correct. Right. Yes. So there is, there is two spaces here. It is there. One is actually which. No, no. I am always talking about two-dimensional space, so I am not mentioning that. Let's no, no, talk. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about just the hypothesis. Hypothesis. The hypothesis is it is a rectangle. Right. So if you have a rectangle, then can you separate out? five points. So, that is the question. So, first of all if you can separate, so for example, uh, if you have um, yeah, for example, if you have these um, uh, for example, uh, yeah the example that that you said I think this can actually be separated out yeah. Uh, yeah, if it, if it is like this, if suppose this is plus, these are minus, 
then you can have a rectangle like this and say that these are rectangle is able to separate them okay this is this is one next if you have the same thing i mean the same set of points okay now if you have of of course if you put a plus here then it is equivalent if you put a plus here so if you have a plus here then also you can say that okay this is plus all these are minus so that means for all possible combination of these four points all possible combinations means plus minus combinations for all different class assignments of these four points with a rectangle you are able to separate them out and therefore the vc dimension is at least greater than equal to 4 you don't know for sure that it is whether it is actually equal to 4 or not right 4 indicates the rectangles what this is we have because we call hypothesis is a rectangle that's why it's 4 core from where no 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 data number of points no 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 that is again not a so for example a circle will have a a, a uh ha so a circle actually has a vc dimension of 3 okay a uh, circle to prove it as exactly a vc dimension of 3 is i, I don't think it is within the okay. as a parameter correlated to no 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 so how it is 3 sir how it is 3 that i can't prove to you because that is uh, i mean no, that I what is meaning of 3 that's the number what is so for example if you have so let's say if you have four points okay sir uh, sir before the no point. let me let me complete this yeah. uh if you have four points yeah. like this okay and suppose this is class positive this is class positive this is class negative this is class negative with two circles you i mean with with circles you won't be able to classify you i mean you won't be able to draw a circle where this two of uh, i mean these two diagonal points are in the same class with a circle that is why you can't shatter or you can't classify it properly you can't classify a set of four points using a um, using a circle your classifier may also look like this i mean your points can also look like this so this is this is uh, one so here also you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to classify it properly for all possible combinations of these four uh, classes assignments sir, four classes sir your pattern in the in the second row sir you you had a pattern where three uh, dots were in the slant and one dot where with square you were able to classify right yes this one uh, right that that even with circle we can classify right sir because instead of square it is just a circle the which one positive uh second row sir uh left second row oh, i'm left. i'm i'm seeing so many points okay okay <laughs> means uh, there is three negatives and one <laughs> positive and on the positive you have put a circle sir in the left right row, right middle, right uh, yeah so So, so that one even instead of circle we can uh, sorry instead of square we can have a circular hypothesis and oh actually actually this was wrong sorry 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 actually this was wrong i'll i'll come to this point so for example if you have plus and uh, plus and minus and minus okay you can't classify i mean yeah for rectangle also you can classify but at least for circle i don't think you will be able to classify how the just the this will be boundary out of that uh, see uh, see so here the this thing right so if you have plus minus minus plus then uh, uh, i mean if you are saying something yes. like this yes. is yes. it yes okay let me see so there are so many points now i'll delete some points what is significant by this vc dimension number that's the only one so vc dimension uh, number is if you yeah so vc dimension number if it increases that means that you are um, what can i say so so for training that model so vc dimension is directly related to the complexity of your model So, if your VC dimension is high, that means you will need more data to train your model. 
I mean, of course, people, I mean, for neural networks, if somebody comes and asks what is the VC dimension, they will be, I mean, it's nobody can compute the VC dimension of any of the models that you have learned. It's just a theory, but uh, yeah, so it shows that, I mean, because of that, some relation that you had. It's the property of hypothesis, not data set, right? No, 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 it's property of the hypothesis, always. Uh, always, it's a property of the hypothesis. Depending on the property of that hypothesis, you will be able to say whether the VC dimension, whether the number of training points that you require to train that hypothesis is higher or lower. Okay, so it's all relative in that sense also. So actually, these four points, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm making. Sir, greater than equal to four, you are telling now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not very convinced. The, how it you got the greater than equal to four now? Can you one? Which one? Yeah, because you saw that at least four points I could classify correctly. So four points at least. Uh, so even if you find find one configuration of four points for which the VC dimension. I mean for which your hypothesis is able to shatter them or classify them correctly. That means that one set of four points you have found that means the VC dimension is greater than equal to four. The way to say that VC dimension is exactly equal to four it is to has to come from a mathematical argument saying that for five points there cannot be any way where I can shatter these five points. Uh, into I can shatter these five points by means of a rectangle. But at the same time, can I tell the three? It can three than of course, if it is greater than equal to four, then it is greater than equal to three. Oh. I mean, you will start with one, then you will go up to two, then you will go up to three, then you will go up to four, then you will go up to five. You will search. You will search for all sets of possible infinite five points and try to find at least one case where we see dimension uh, uh, where the uh, rectangle is able to shatter it properly you will not you will find you will not end up finding that then you will come back to uh, some mathematical argument saying that okay this is the reason why uh, it cannot solve so uh, that is the idea so that requires some set theoretic knowledge i uh, that's why it's it's not within the course uh, within uh, the sir, uh, yeah the, wo the word shattering and classification is same right no shattering and classification is different so uh, what uh, what you mean by shattering is okay so what can you say yeah so for shattering what you can say is you have a set of four points you take all possible combination of label assignment to them all possible combinations okay so whenever you get all possible combinations of label assignments that means that your problem uh, i mean and if your hypothesis is able to classify all of them properly then that means you are able to shatter them ah okay okay sir okay yeah and the other question is see for rectangles uh, this was easy okay the rectangles whenever when, i mean when i was talking about the rectangle the one thing is okay let's say i have one such rectangle okay uh, okay how should i put this It's uh, okay. So it's not about that. Your positive classes and negative classes have to be separated out, just with one rectangle. Okay, that was a mistake that I was making. Sorry for that. So your positive and negative classes have to be part of different rectangles. Okay. So one thing which you have to do is. For example, I'll give you an example of the circle since you raise that yeah so if this is the case and if suppose this is this is plus and this is plus this is minus and this is minus then what you what you need to do is you okay you put a circle here that is fine how can you put a circle which looks at these two negative points and does not intersect or does not so there is no way right there is no way you can put a circle between this minus and this minus and not include these two points within it. Is it clear now that why a circle cannot shatter this? Then how can a rectangular uh, rectangle shatter? Yeah, rectangle also can't sh shatter this. That was the mistake that I was making. Okay. Rectangle cannot shatter this actually. Rectangle is, th if this is plus, this is plus, this is minus, this is minus, 
then you will have a rectangle like this in no way you can shatter these four points I, I mean these two negative points. So, rectangle will have a different configuration I have to build that up somehow uh, suppose your rectangle is like this ok and ok this also will not work. Uh, how can I make a rectangle I have so many points that I am confused now ok let me rub this. rectangle actually won't be able to shatter this it will be able to shatter another set of four points now we have to find out that set of four points that is the uh, that is the question that mm. was given in the notes sir uh, oh is it okay notes, yeah. a rectangular that is fine four sets okay so i don't have that with me right now anyway okay so will this be able to shatter ok no this also won't be able to shatter I feel mm. if this is plus this is plus ok no rectangle should be able to it has a VC dimension of 4 if I am not mistaken right sir yeah uh, no cannot be collinear of course Collinear uh, point we take or not? We, we can leave that, uh, or is basically we can find if it's still working for that. Huh? Collinear power. Okay, suppose there is no mention of collinearity or huh? exclusion. Huh? In our hypothesis, we should take consider that linearity or not. That is my question. Uh, suppose so collinearity. Wa collinearity is the property of what? property of the points when or the hypothesis something like plus minus plus we cannot do huh. by huh. so huh. in many examples the lay they handle the linearity differently right or they in vc dimension calculation we should leave uh, by saying that it is it cannot be shattered and the rest of the cases we define vc dimension right or how we no again you are mistaking the same making the same mistake vc dimension is not the property of the points it's a property of the hypothesis so, just showing that your hypothesis cannot classify a, a group of collinear points does not say anything about the VC dimension of that uh, of that hypothesis. It will affect, uh, no, then uh, if it's circle is the circle, nah, it, uh, uh, like you have. Uh, right, for example, for circle, whenever I am talking of this particular example, right there is actually a mathematical argument as to why this cannot be done by a circle ok. So, I do not want to go into that, but there is a mathematical argument behind this it is not like I give you gave you one example and then you uh, thought that ok I will ok. This is, so, you take me uh, one example I could not shatter that means circle has a does not have a uh, VC dimension of 4 that is not the case this is the exam this is the way that example will be this is the way that example will be constructed ok. So, uh, so what, if, what they will do is first of course, they will start with collinearity collinear points and they will again say ok if I have collinear points plus minus plus minus then no circle will be able to classify shattered them that is one. Then they will say ok if the so you know something which is known as the convex hull of points. So, if you have a convex hull which is in the shape of a of a triangle and then if you put the fourth point in between then again you will say that ok the circle would not be able to uh, so that the same same as this. So, it would not be able to shatter if this is a different class as the other three. Okay. The third point is and which is slightly more involved is the concept when the convex hull becomes a rectangle becomes a quadrilateral ok. So, this is a case where the convex hull becomes a quadrilateral here if you take I mean uh, here the uh, the argument goes like if the two diagonal points uh, have different have the same class I mean two diagonal point mean this and this the two long diagonal points and the short diagonal points if they have the same class then by means of some by means of some uh, set theoretic set theoretic uh, explanation they come come to the conclusion that a circle would not be able to shatter these four I mean we would not be able to classify these two I mean the, the for these four points when they are uh, when they are assigned labels like these ok. 
so sir, that is uh, the in, yeah in notes there was one point sir like um, for uh, generally yeah. let's say, uh, i have put it in chat huh. uh, it uh, like it give a general rule that since if there are 2m partition since there are 2m partitions for m instances in order for h to shatter instances modular of h is greater than or equal to 2m couldn't understand that what i also am not able to understand this <laughs> <laughs> since there are 2m partitions of m instances instances are points since there are 2m partitions for h in instances for h to shattered instances h must be greater than 2m okay So I could understand. Uh, okay, this is the hypothesis. Actually, this is the hypothesis. This is the. Uh, it is for that uh, high VC dimension only, sir. So sorry, sir. Actually, the the two m is not two into m. It is two raised to m. So. Okay, two to the power m. So, okay. Ah, uh, two to the power of m. No, VC dimension can't be two to the power of m. This is the hypo. This is the hypothesis complexity. This is not the VC dimension. Uh, can you suggest any reference where we can look more detail vc dimension vc dimension i have to see i have i don't i i can't i can't remember at the top of my mind next class maybe i will give you the reference for this yeah but i would suggest that don't go too much into this vc dimension stuff it's quite advanced uh, and application no application, application is not it, it is not required at all application point of view vc dimension it won't be required If you work in machine learning theory and learning theory, then VC dimension comes into play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sir, on last uh, question yeah. on this. Yeah. Uh, at least no. Okay. One point for me. Uh, when you take no these four points. Right. Okay. Now these four points, I should take all the possible class. Am I right? No. Like no. Any any set of four points, if you are able to shatter, your VC dimension is at least that. No, no. Any set of four points, okay. Any set of four point one four point I take in some order, huh. order for order. Okay. Huh, huh. In that order, I should be able to classify all the classes because all the classes. Is, yes. Uh, that's important. The so two point is there. Correct. No. One huh. is first select any four point. Huh. Now you have ordered it. Some order you done it actually. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that four point you should be able to all the class. Correct. That is known as shattering. That is the difference between shattering and classification. Okay. So the interval. Type of question. Do yeah. we consider infinite in the interval? Suppose minus infinity to some number x. Right. Do we consider this kind of, or should we always some? So that also will come to you from the point of view of. I mean, that will be given to you. I mean, I mean the hypothesis, for example, it will either be a circle, or it will be a rectangle, or it will be some intervals on the y on the real axis. Or it will be something else so completely. They generally define a to a comma b in real number line. Yes, okay. yes. So can we take their infinitive case also? That wrong question. A to b, if uh, I mean, if the range is not given to you, then you can take it to infinity. But if the range is not is given to you, then you can't take that. No, there is no number assigned. They just in the terms of the hypothesis is just a to b for any. A to b, if it is also like a to b, if it is like this. Then you can then you can take minus infinity to infinity. If it is like this, then you can't take. Then that means that a and b has to be in the. Equal to. Uh, 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 so, yeah. So, these are details. Okay, these are not that. Uh, what should I say? Yeah, just about. Uh, yeah. So the so the question that you had asked about the sine wave, right? The sine wave question is an interesting one. So what happens is if you have a periodic wave. So sine oh, wave. Plus minus plus minus we can. Ha. Huh. So since it goes up to infinity, you can put infinite points in the positive plane, infinite points in the negative plane, and you can say that I am shattering them. So that is why I told that in, uh, it is probably infinity, but uh, I think it is infinity, but uh, I don't know. Okay. So uh, and uh, one thing which uh, you should always know is. Um, Yeah, so the one thing that can be that can be an indication, I mean, that can be useful information from the VC dimension is, if provided you find the VC dimension first, that itself is a big task. Uh, if you have the VC dimension of two classifiers, the one with a higher VC dimension will generally require much more data to train that model. That is the only takeaway from all these things. Okay. 
okay so yes that was so fine uh, yeah okay so this was done okay so this question was already i think answered by somebody which of the following algorithms are not an ensemble learning algorithm so is random forest an ensemble learning algorithm okay I, uh, is my screen frozen hello 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 okay let me rejoin So, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, which of the following algorithms are not an ensemble learning algorithm? So, uh, so I, I of course couldn't hear you. So, uh, can can somebody answer this? The decision tree, sir. Yes. So, gradient boosting is something that you, uh, you have not been told about this uh, in this in this course. But gradient boosting is another way of. Uh, I mean, it's closely related not closely related it's actually different but okay so it's slightly related to ada boost ada boost but uh, it's also a, an ensemble learning algorithm okay okay which of the following can be true for selecting base learners for an ensemble so different learners can come from the same algorithm with different hyperparameters this is true Different learners can come from different algorithms, that is also true. Different learners can come from different training spaces, that is also true. So, all of the above is the correct answer. Okay. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got one more question. In general, we told no, the previously, we will use the same algorithm. That is for bagging. That is for bagging. Okay. Ensemble learning is different. Bagging is a way of ensemble learning. Ensemble learning is the big class within which bagging is a way. Uh, uh, this um, ADA boost is a way, gradient boosting is a way, other ways are also there and this simple thing is also there. You train one neural network, you train one decision tree, you train one logistic regression, you train one SVM, you combine all of them to get your classifier output. Okay, so in general ensemble we can do whatever uh, the way right, you yes. merge it. Right, yes, okay. yes. Okay, then I think this is the last question. So, generally an ensemble method works better if the individual base models have. Uh, so, uh, here the, it has been given that individual models have an accuracy greater than 50 percent. So, when will an ensemble method work better? Less correlation among predictions, high correlation among predictions, correlation does not have an impact on the ensemble output. What do you think? Less correlation. Yeah, why? high variance then uh, it will be I know that way some answer. I, you should no, be you are correct, correct. So, uh, can you, uh, you think of this like you think of ensemble learning as this. So, suppose you have three classifiers. Okay. So, what are you trying to achieve by ensemble learning? What is the final end goal? Uh, yes, uh, improve the performance, correct. Now, suppose you have three classifiers, all of them perform similarly, then what will ensemble learning give you? Huh, then you did not did not need to do ensemble learning in the first place. So, that is why uh, your uh, ensemble learning should always be done in a in a case when the correlation among predictions is less. Okay. Of course, it has to be good. I mean, you cannot do an ensemble learning with an accuracy which is less than 50 percent. Uh, that would be very bad, but uh, your correlation among prediction should be good. Uh, sir, yeah. so uh, in general in the ensemble, hmm. we will make the 
weak learners hmm. test above fifty percent. That's the ideal condition. Am I right? We should do like that. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, why do you want that? Your weak learners, your weak learners can even go up to sixty, seventy percent. Doesn't matter. For, uh, I mean, I'm I'm saying that. I mean, it depends, of course, on the type of ensemble learning that you are using. If you are using gradient, if you are using Ada Boost, then just have a fifty percent is fine. I mean, it's not like see. So, so there are two ways to look at this. So you are saying that. my uh, classifier had a capability of classifying up to 90% accuracy but just because i will do ensemble i will make it and and stop it above 50% just if you go to 50% i will i will not allow you to train after that that is not the principle the principle below 50 we discard or we don't take any learner or what below 50 you shouldn't take yeah so the the so the way you should think about all this is okay so i know that uh, my can you uh, yeah this just above 50 is uh, able to give the uh, if i if i take many learners just above 50 hmm. able to come with a better uh, accuracy at the end eh? yes is it not possible at all if i take a less just below 50 and take it because mathematically it's not possible or our is the engineer experience it is the answer just below 50 So, if you have one classifier, and if you have in total around hundred classifiers, and that below one fifty classifier you have taken, then it of course won't affect, and uh, it won't affect. But then, if you have a classifier which is operating at a frequency which is operating at an accuracy which is less than the chance accuracy, then you, why will you use that classifier in the first place? Uh, but in question, or we are point four seven somewhere in the C one C two C two, so that's why. Point four seven. Some some question I've seen. Uh, yeah. Some yeah. Ah, right? uh, so that is a question, right? I mean, in practice, you will never use that. I mean, if your classifier is a two-way. Cl Theoretical definition: We should. Is he a learner or not? That's right. It's a weak learner. It's a it's a very bad learner and also a weak learner. Okay. I don't know. That's the question, sir. The weak learner. The word no itself. Huh. Okay. So here we are telling the weak learner means. Our criteria is weak learner should be above fifty actually at least. Yeah. So yeah. Question is there. Yeah. How can I tell a weak learner? So See, for example, this weak learner and all these learners were not. Uh, I mean, they are not related to ensemble learning in general, and they are not related to bagging also. If you see the lecture correctly, they will not be related to the bagging. They will be very closely related to boosting. Uh, what is the threshold for strong and weak? That's uh, how. Uh, of course, point five. Of course, so I mean if it. Lower bound, but uh, what is upper bound? Like strong, when we say. Is strong is around ninety percent. So that again depends. I mean, these are very subjective questions. Depends oh, on the data set. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Why is that question, sir? One question here, there in this uh, assignment, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the weak learner is called weak. Their uh, accuracy is just. Above fifty, less than fifty, like that. Ha ha ha! It's less than fifty shouldn't be a. I mean, yeah yeah. See, just one minus. See, one was one thing which I'll tell you is, let's say an, a classifier has an accuracy of forty-seven percent, right? In a two-way classification, you have classified something with forty-seven percent. That, in some sense, is actually fifty-three percent also. You can just invert the labels, and it will become fifty-three percent. Yeah yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, forty-seven uh, percent calling that a weak learner is fine. But if you have a classifier which is, let's say, ten percent accurate, <laughs> then you are very good. I mean, it's actually ninety percent accurate. Yeah. It is it, it applicable for the two way. Two huh. ways. It's applicable. It's applicable for two ways. Let's stick to two ways only, uh, because that is a that is where that fifty percent thing will come. Yeah, and one more last question. Yeah. Uh, as the madam told, see, there is a confusion about the word performance and accuracy. Hmm. Uh, why I am telling see this uh, algorithm of the bagging or uh, the this one boosting. I take bagging only. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We do much parallelism basically. Yes. So there is computation performance improvement is there. Okay. Hmm. 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 This method is only used for the accuracy purpose. That is the result. Accuracy. I am talking about the result actually. Final result actually. Prediction accuracy. Okay. So the bagging is used only for the prediction accuracy or also for the performance computation. Also for the performance sometimes. so performance also it might improve i mean these things uh, see basically what will happen is 
Finally, when you will try to implement this algorithms yourself, you yourself will need to search between different algorithms and see which one is working the best. And uh, so, bagging gives you a way to say that okay, I want to, I, I want to, okay, I have a very cheap classifier which is cheap means I want a cl the classifier trains very quickly, okay, 5 minutes it takes to train. Then you, what you can say is I will have 500 or 1000 such classifiers, it will and I will run all of them parallelly, within 5 minutes I will get 1000 classifiers and then I will, I will see which is the majority vote for a particular test sample. Okay. So, depending on the majority vote of the test samples you will classify. So, that helps sometimes helps sometimes does not help. Now, if you ask me nowadays what happens is because all of those classif classifiers they are they have become very heavy bagging is generally not used nowadays. Okay. Bagging is only suitable when of course, you have many classifiers all of them run very fast and you will try you will get some uh, improvement at the end of the day. But if your computational requirement is itself very high for each classifier, then you won't be able to train a bag. Then you, you 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 will never be able to train a bagging model. And on the other hand, boosting is a sequential classifier. So boosting doesn't have that parallelization thing. But one thing is boosting will perform definitely. It will perform much better than bagging. In most cases, again, I can't make such. I shouldn't make such statements that it will always perform better mostly it will perform better that is the only thing that we can say. Okay. Sir, yeah, are you able to uh, open the current assignment sir, this, yeah, this week's uh, boosting and current assignment, uh, just, yeah you can continue. I will I will open in the meanwhile, which question any particular question, hello, hello, sorry, sorry I was on mute and talking, yeah, yeah. question 5 and 6 sir, okay, let me see, okay, you can you can uh, start telling the question I in meanwhile I will open, okay, so it um, the question says, uh, suppose you have uh, trained three classifiers, each, okay. of, each of which returns either 1 or minus 1 hmm. and tested their accuracies uh, hmm. uh, to find the following. So, all three classifiers with their accuracies is given. Mm -hmm. uh, Let us see with a classifier that returns a majority vote Okay. three classifiers. Yes. Assuming the errors of the CI are independent, what hmm. is the probability that CX will be correct on a new test sample X? Okay, so the, you would uh, okay, so you would need to do it in three ways, I believe, uh, four ways, if I am not mistaken. So let me get to that question. So is it a problem with the answer or? No, with a, with a how the they cost. got to that calculation only is. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Not uh, intuitively, okay. you can answer it, but we don't know their mathematical background. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, even that is what even I couldn't um, solve it mathematically, but just uh, intuitionally I just selected that answer. So uh, proper method answer we get different. That's why we are doing. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let right me let me see. So the solutions for all these are not given to you all, or they will be given. Solution after is given, sir. Uh, okay. But uh, we don't know how to uh, derive that okay, derive that solution. Okay, okay. Question five and Question six. Five. Okay, 5. So, C1 has a accuracy of 0.6. Oh, the other, the last classifier is, okay. Oh, oh that is, that is why this was, was saying, yes. oh, that is why all this confusion. Who gives you a classifier with an accuracy of 0.445? Anyway, okay. And this is just for, uh, uh, I mean, just for a question. Nobody will give you a classifier. Anyway, okay, fine. Right, so let C be the classifier that returns a majority vote of the three classifiers assuming the errors of the CI are independent, what is the probability that CX will be correct on a new test example. Okay, so, so the first condition would be if all of them give you correctly, so that means 0 0.6 into 0 0.55 into 0 0.45. Okay, this is the probability of each of the classifiers being correct. The next one would be the first is correct. 
and let us say the second one is also correct, but the third one is incorrect. The third one would be the first one is correct, the second one is incorrect and the last one is also correct and the first and the, la and the last summation would be the first one is incorrect, the other two are correct. So, can you add these and check? I mean I do not have a calculator with me. So, what okay, is it? Because Let majority votes, so two cases we need to test. Yes, yes, right? yes, yes. Okay. I, I mean three cases where 3 C 2, where all cases is, all of them are correct is one. So, can you just check somebody? Sure, sir. Uh, yeah, so what does this come to? I am not sure. This mm. 0.6 into point all right. Into point four. Point four. So that would be around point. No, 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 sir. The point six into point five five into point four five is coming up to point one four eight. Point one four eight. Okay. Then the next one. Point six into point five into point five. Point five five is coming up to point one eight one. Point one eight one. Okay. The third one. coming up to 0 0.121 0 0.121 and the fourth one is 0 0.148 into 4 by 6 which would be 0 0.08 0 .08 something 0 0.09 or something no just check point zero nine nine. 0.099 okay you can add this and it would come to what 10 uh, uh, okay, you can add this. It okay, it is coming up to point point five four nine. Ha ha. So something. Ha 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 ha. So point five five zero five. Yeah yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. And uh, question six, sir. Question six. Suppose you have run Ada Boost on a training set for three. Yeah. This is uh, how it relate to ensemble or anything. This is like like a, like a Bayesian rule like that method. This is just simple probability, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you are trying an ensemble, trying all the things. Huh. So okay, then if I we get the uh, error one and then we one minus we do hmm. that method uh, will come up with a different answer. But that time I didn't take that that majority vote. Ha, the majority voting was there. That is why. Ha, at least two. If it gets correctly, then you have to take correctly. Good question. Ah, uh, yeah. So the next one would be: Suppose you have run Ada Boost on a training set for three boosting iterations. The results are classified as H1, H2, H3 with coefficients alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. You find that the classifiers results on a text text test example is H1x, H2x, and H3x. What is the class returned by the Ada Boost? Oh, you just take a weighted average of these. No, so 0 0.2 into 1 minus 0 0.3 into 1 minus 0 0.2 into minus 1. Uh, so, it would be 0 0.4 minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.1. So, it will be plus 1. Yeah. Sorry sir, can, can you say Oh, so this is, like this is like uh, you have to take H1x alpha 1, sorry, alpha 1 H1x plus alpha 2 H2x plus alpha 3 H uh, what? H3x you take and uh, you see uh, what is the uh, what which is the class which is so greater than 0 means class 1 sign of it, right? huh, you take need to take a sign of it so greater than 0 means it is class 1 less than 0 means it is minus 1 what do you mean by taking sign sir so that is where i was confused like sign means doing this uh, 0.2 uh, h1 into alpha 1 0.2 h2 into alpha 2 minus 0 0.3 h3 right. into alpha 3 plus 0 0.2 so yeah. So, it is point 0.1, right? So, point 0.1 is greater than 0, that means it is class 1. Okay. okay. So, sign, sign of the value. No, sign of the, yeah, yeah. Sign of the value. The sign of the value is positive here. Yeah. Here. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. If it is minus point 0.1, then it is mi minus 1. Yes, like that. yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. So, that is why it is class 1, yeah. Okay, will be there. Uh, it is relevant to exam Python or something relevant. We have to see. 
uh, for exams that you have to ask the proper TAs for this course. I am not, we are not involved with the conduction of exams, so I do not know. Okay, so, to whom we to ask so, you can ask in the forum, I am not sure about okay. the actual TAs of Somebody this. Somebody already asked, I think. I okay, know. okay, then they will answer probably, they will answer. Okay, so are there any more questions? Okay. There is no more question, but yeah. that it has the queue. With, with the VC dimension the thing, right? Assignment, no, I, assignment type, whether hard resulting and soft resulting one. Although in. Hello? I wanted to ensure wherever I check, hard resulting is just exact without considering any tolerance. Which one? I am not sure. Which one? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am not sure which question you are referring to. That assignment 5, one question was there that uh, regarding the hard margin. Hard margin, okay. Okay, this is hard SVMs. Margin soft margin, yes. Right, right. Look at me. Can you tell me the question number? Question number, question number 3. Ah, question number 3, yes. What do you mean by a hard margin in SVM classification? The SVM allows very low error. Yeah, so what was the... Uh, I opted D because the hard case holding uh, was only for the, there is no tolerance we allowed. Yes. And soft, concept of short margin comes when we allowed a little bit error. Right. So, to put the low, here in the context of low. Oh, okay, okay, I just got your confusion. I wanted to clarify that, but I search a lot. But I uh, no, uh, see, so when you are saying that... Uh, in okay. also you will find the direct definition of hard is there, trying no, uh, no tolerance is allowed. Right. So, what happens is, I mean this is why I have some doubts about these questions myself anyway. Okay. So, what do you mean by hard margin in SVM classification? That means that I, I mean the SVM algorithm would not allow anybody to stay, uh, can you see my, uh, I, uh, okay, fine. So, what do you mean, what do you mean by hard margin is, you do not have any, I mean for example, these are all plus class, these are all minus classes. So, by means of hard margin is, SVM algorithm will not allow any error, right. Now, suppose your data is separated like this, suppose your data is like this. Then SVM being a linear classifier, it has to get some error. Hmm. Now on top of this, if you make it a soft margin, SVM will say, okay, I will allow some error. But I mean, it is not like for any particular training algorithm, your error will go down to 0. Training error I am talking about. Your error will never go down to 0. It will be very low, but it will never go down to 0. Oh, that is why I got see, same question comes from the exam, what we should opt as well. Yeah, so always. Ha, so, so whenever you, you get this confusion as to, okay, so if this question says that if I, if I mark one particular option, that means, I mean, uh, it is very difficult to explain these. So, uh, what you can uh, think of like is, okay, so let us say I am talking about the SVM model only. I do not know what the error it will finally achieve, but I, I am thinking about the SVM algorithm. So, when the SVM algorithm works, it will say I want no error at all, I will say zero error, but finally will it be able to achieve zero error, that depends on the training data. But SVM will say okay, if you are, if I am using a hard margin, then I, I, I cannot live with high error, you give me either zero error or very low error. Okay, so, that is the way you can think of these things, zero perfectly is not possible in machine learning. Not Practical scenario is different, but I think, yeah, so that is the that is the problem. I mean, some questions are given from a practical ah, standpoint, I mean, some so questions are given. Ha, ha, ha. Right, right, right. I understand your confusion, that is also relevant, but I can't help it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, sir, sir, can, uh, if they apply hard margin, what will happen? Uh, hard margin, so that is uh, like, that is a that is the entire SVM lecture, no? 
you go. No, no. What I'm telling, suppose if I apply that algorithm, I'll get what is the algorithm return to me? It is the. It will return you. It will. Hi, full not full of errors. It will have some errors. Yeah. Depend on the case. In some cases, no, in this case, I'm telling in this case, whatever huh. you draw now. Hi, it will give you error. Yeah. High error. Yeah. Yes. Give you high error actually. Not high error. I mean, high of course. I mean, I have not drawn all the data points. No, 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 no. You are drawing the data points in the margin actually. That's See, now with every plus points that I am giving, I am reducing the error. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. That I understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For other way of saying, at least one point is suppose on the other end. Hmm. Can we say overlapping or not? One, one point, point is on the on other the end. Side. Ha ha. Then you can say overlapping. Okay. Then you can say overlapping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cluster actually. Hmm. Based on? Clustering. Clustering. No. Clustering is the last week lecture, no? Okay. No, no, you can tell. You can tell. You can tell. Because over, next ah, that the date is ah, no, no, no. Okay, the doubts I can ask. No, in general doubts. No, no, you can ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, in the cluster, when I am doing that the k partition, hmm. if I take the uh, the first the k points from the same sec, uh, cluster, right? I am taking the random thing. Okay. Right. So if I take the same uh, cluster, okay. Uh, Then is it uh, algorithm finally will give the result for me to group it or it will be bad result? How the? No, I'm I. Yeah. I'm not getting your question entirely. Okay, uh, in the k-means clustering. Yeah. yeah. Initially, we'll start with like two 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 uh, clustering. We'll think about okay, only two. Two classes. So, yeah, two classes. Okay. Two huh? clustering. C one, C two. Okay. Huh. So I should take the initial point before the algorithm starts. Right. If I take the both the points from the same cluster, hmm. is it algorithm is? Ah, doesn't matter. Okay, finally it will it will eventually. Ah. It will eventually it will eventually. It will more time maybe, uh, but even ah. more. Ha ah. ha. So finally you will have to. That is why clustering always starts with some random points that you select. But initialization point do affect? No? Initializations yeah. point will affect. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, there are certain cases where initializations will affect you. So, in so this case, what you drawn? Suppose minus minus we have taken mm -hmm. the two points at center itself. Hmm. So Doesn't matter. Two. Then it will. Then it will. I mean, if you select the same point, then it will matter. Yes, I mean, not same point, but very close point. Ha. Huh, so then, then it doesn't matter. It will converge to local minimum. No, 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 no. What it will do is, it will. Uh, so if you go through the k-means algorithm, so first it will look at these two points. Okay. Suppose you have selected these two points. Okay. Or okay, let me make it even tougher for the algorithm. Ah, because it is very separate, so definitely it will shift there. Uh -huh. But it's suppose there is overlap. Right. So overlap means same point. Okay. If you select the same point, then you can't do anything. But if they are even slightly different from each other, suppose you have selected one point here, one point here. Right. You have selected uh, two such points, then. the point which is actually closer to this plus point will you will see if you run through the algorithm then it will slowly come towards this yeah yeah because it is little bit close to the other part ha ha it will slowly ha ha it will start moving there. towards of course the other point is true that it will probably take it longer to classify yeah. uh, so uh, but it will definitely so so i actually needed to have a big page for this uh just give me a minute let me try to uh, let me draw all this vc stuff i will rem i'm removing okay yeah so let's say i have all my plus points here all my negative points here and suppose if i take this point as my c1 and this point as my c2 now what will happen is it will um so what uh, so here what will here what will happen is since this point this particular point which i am marking this point is slightly closer to the plus most likely most of this plus will be assigned to this cluster now most likely okay i'm not only talking about whether it will be perfectly the case but most likely most of this 
plus will be assigned to this cluster and some negatives will be assigned to this cluster. So, the positive cluster after and this also will be assigned to this cluster. So, somewhere here the centroid will move somewhere here and and the other centroid will move somewhere here uh, somewhere here then it will start I mean then you can you can draw yourself and make uh, and convince convince yourself that it will slowly start moving towards the actual thing. Uh, however, there is a I mean there is a actually problem with k-means. So, let us say I have classes like this okay, and, and this is actually a problem where you have no solution. Is it or no, no, no I am telling that I am telling that. So, uh, suppose you have uh, no not like this uh, let us say uh, no, no no all those will work fine all those will work fine I am trying to see uh, I am trying to construct an example where is it this will actually fail ok. Uh, right ok. Yeah. So, uh, one thing uh, which might happen is let us talk about it from a practical standpoint. So, suppose you have all doctors features I mean these are some features you have all the doctors here you have all uh, nurses here ok. On the on this quadrant I mean on the th first and the fourth quadrant you have nurses and in the second and the third quadrant you have doctors second and the third quadrant yeah and plus represents all uh, males and and this negative this represents all females and similarly for nurses also you have all positives here and all negatives here I mean all females here. So, is the problem setting clear? So, you have doctors, nurses, you have males, females is it clear? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Now, you want your k-means clustering to give you let us say all males in one cluster and all females in another cluster that is the aim that that is what you want ok. So, what you want is this all males in one cluster all females in one cluster ok. So, you would need to end up with two uh, centroids that is the aim of your clustering algorithm right. But depending on your I mean uh, so however, you started with two centroids the first centroid was somewhere here the second centroid was somewhere here ok this is centroid 1 this is centroid 2 what do you think what will happen. Is the problem setting clear? Yeah, here actually condition is whether you want vertical grouping or horizontal grouping. Right. So, if you have C if you have started from C 1 and C 2 what do you think will you get the vertical grouping or horizontal grouping? Vertical grouping. Yes. So, this is where k means algorithm will fail I mean it, it has not failed of course, you cannot say that it has failed it has given you one possible clusters, but that is the cluster that you did not want you wanted a different set of clusters, but you do not have any hand in that. So, this problem is still not solved I mean it is very difficult to solve such problems, but yeah k means algorithm depends on the starting point because of all these. And one small question sir, yeah. this is uh, when you do the uh, inter cluster distance measurement, yeah. we will take the, the, sh the shortest distance the two so, that also I think this is for agglomerative clustering right. Uh, so in lecture it is a little switched I think. The uh, whatever, hmm. but, uh, single and simple that word is little bit uh, some place single. So, oh, I want uh, this simple and single it is one definition max and mean. Uh, uh, so, there are different ways of taking that distance ok. 
so no, no, one is one is taking christian other one for me whether the word is singular or simple or both are same that i have to see terminology i have i don't remember exactly okay. so i'll i'll clarify that maybe when i i uh, talk about uh, that clustering okay. but uh, but as i remember there is something known as single linkage complete linkage all those things are there yeah yeah single linkage or simple linkage someplace ha 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 so simple i think i think it is single only so i am not sure i can't say that for sure because i have not looked at the lecture but i think single linkage is same as simple okay. linkage yeah in game in what is safe safe role like uh, does it count as safe in as a good performance or bad performance what is safe what it means there look uh, like in shape like convex non convex one that uh, round spherical oh, okay okay shape. okay i'm i'm you're talking about the shape of the clusters ha huh, no shape of the yes what is the role of uh, like shape like spherical we say that is a uh, spherical cluster we can imagine like there are other convex and non convex also like uh, so what is the it, it, it doesn't have any role there like so, so so finally ultimately we end up with the same shape or different that's that depends on uh, that depends on the problem setting that you can't say i mean uh, nobody can say that you may end up with a circle you may end up with a ellipse hmm. you may i mean of course all these are when you when you talk about 2d finally k means will work in 768 or 224 dimensions there you don't have such definitions so different different distance that uh, we take does hmm. it affect uh, the ha ah, of course the of course it will affect it will affect it will affect okay so if there are no more questions sir, how yeah. will the different distance affect sir because um, they all the same distance will be applied for everything right like no uh, the differences euclidean. will uh, the, yeah so euclidean distance is one distance for example you can take l1 distance l1 distance will start affecting the shapes also okay so uh, yeah so it will it will it can affect but k means is will generally be run always with the euclidean distance only Okay then thank you uh, we'll meet again very shortly next tuesday only we'll meet okay okay thank you sir. thank you